When it comes to mythology, many people think of Zeus or Poseidon from Greek mythology, Osiris or Isis from Egyptian mythology, or Thor or Loki from Norse mythology. However, there are so many other mythologies all over the world that barely get any recognition at all, one of which is Indonesian mythology. Indonesia is the world's largest archipelago, located in Southeast Asia. It is a dense rainforest, supporting one of the world's most biodiverse locations, which allows for several myths and stories about the various species living there. It is also the fourth most populated country in the world. With 6,000 out of 17,500 islands inhabited, over 700 languages spoken, and several communities throughout cities and rural areas, as well as different mythologies and stories in each of those islands and communities, Indonesia is rich in culture, landscape, scenery, and mythology. These are a few of the vast amounts of stories commonly told throughout Indonesia. One of the most famous Indonesian myths is Nyai Roro Kidul, Ratu Pantai Selatan, or Dewi Kadita. Ratu translates to queen, Pantai translates to beach, and Selatan translates to south, making her the Indonesian queen of the South Sea, which is the Indian Ocean. She is considered both a demon and a deity. When her father, the king, was about to retire, Dewi Kadita was his only child, and having a queen lead a kingdom instead of a king was forbidden. He married another woman to get a son for a male heir. When his wife got pregnant with a boy, she forced the king to choose between her and Kadita. If the king chose his daughter, the wife threatened to leave the palace and leave the throne for Kadita, and if the king chose his wife, Kadita would be banished and the unborn son would later claim the throne. The king decides to banish Kadita and orders a witch to curse her with leprosy. While walking on the shore after she got banished, Kadita hears a voice that tells her to jump in the water at midnight to cure her disease, and she does, vanishing and becoming the queen of the South Sea. Dewi angin -angin. Datanglah ke kerajaan abadimu. Terjunlah, terjunlah. Kau sekarang adalah ratu kami, dan manusia akan mengenalmu sebagai Nyi Roro Kidul, Ratu Pantai Selatan. A common superstition coming from the legend of Nyai Roro Kidul is that you're not allowed to wear green, which is Kadita's sacred color on the beaches of the Indian Ocean, or else Kadita will come and drown you. There are stories that there was a person wearing green on the shores of the South Sea, playing with a ball, and even though only their feet were in the water, they disappeared. In buildings and homes near the coast of the South Sea, there would be rooms dedicated to Kadita, completely covered in green. There was a story about a room in a Bali hotel that was dedicated to Kadita, with green walls, filled with offerings, green couches, and a large painting of her in the middle. There was a fire that damaged all of the rooms in the hotel, but that room was the only room that stayed undamaged and untouched. Many people still believe in these superstitions of Nyai Rawakidul today. Another popular myth in Indonesia is Rayok. Rayok is a traditional folk dance from Java about the story of the king of Ponorogo on a quest to fulfill a princess's high expectations for a groom. The dance originated in the 15th century, created by a man named Ki Agenkutu, 
Rayok dancers wore massive masks supported by the teeth, weighing 66 to 88 pounds, spanning up to 10 feet, and made from tiger skin and peacock feathers. These masks portray a monster named Singo Barong, a lion with a peafowl on its head. Singo means lion, and Barong is a creature that shows up during times of celebration to ward off evil. There was a princess named Dewi Songolangit who held a contest for those who wanted to marry her. There were two criteria in order to wed her, to bring 140 twin horses and a two-headed animal. When the king of Ponorogo, named Klono Sewandono, heard the news, he was determined to fulfill the conditions and win Dewi Songolangit as his bride. He was able to find 140 twin horses, but he couldn't find the two-headed animal. Klono Sewandono headed to a forest to try and find the two-headed animal, where he comes across a lion with a peafowl sitting on its head. A great fight ensues, and this fight is the part of the dance where the main dancer comes out with the single barong mask. Klono Sewandono manages to defeat and capture single barong, and now, with both of the requirements filled, he goes to meet Dewi Somalangit, who reluctantly accepts to become his queen. A lot of superstitions also take place behind the scenes of the performances. The dancers have to follow a very strict set of rules, rituals, and exercises, physically as well as spiritually. They believe that there are spirits that live inside of the masks, so they pray and perform rituals before every performance. Dancers bless the masks with incense and herb smoke, tie cigarettes onto the mask's hair, and splash blessed water. These rituals ask the spirits for their blessing, for strength, and to not do bad things during the performance and to the area. There are many stories about how some dancers didn't perform these rituals before a performance, and they were too weak to perform, or something terrible happened because the spirits in those masks were angry. The Rayo Bonarogo dance is now the traditional dance of Bonarogo. Today, it is performed at special events such as weddings, Islamic celebrations, and the anniversary of the Bonarogo Regency. The Rayok's most famous component is a fictional two-headed monster, but there are also many stories about real animals native to Indonesia. One of the most famous Indonesian myths about an animal is the legend of Putri Naga Komodo, or the Dragon Princess of Komodo. Komodo dragons are the biggest lizards in the world and are only found in five of Indonesia's islands, Komodo, Rinka, Gili Montang, Gili Dasami, and Flores. They are apex predators with a venomous bite who ambush their prey, sometimes even attacking and killing humans. Even though Komodo dragons are big, aggressive, bloodthirsty creatures, native peoples have a lot of respect for them and live in harmony with them. They had stories about the origin of the Komodo dragon and why we need to respect them. Once upon a time, there was a village that lived in the mountains and its chief's wife, Leia, gets pregnant. The village had no local doctor, so the chief and Punajo delivers the child. Leia gives birth to a human son, Si Gerong, and a dragon sister, Aura, but dies during childbirth. Aura was already exploring outside, climbing trees, and attacking the neighbor's chickens before Si Gerong could even walk. They grew up together, and Si Gerong played with Aura more than with any of the other children. Aura starts going to the wild and meeting other dragons, coming back every day, but her trips start getting longer and longer, and eventually she leaves forever. Si Gerong became a wise and skilled man. He was good at everything, but most notably, he was an outstanding hunter. One day, Si Gerong finds a deer and is about to throw his spear when a dragon pops up. Si Gerong is about to attack the dragon when a radiant figure of a woman appears. She says, put down your spear, my son. Would you kill your own sister? She is Aura. I bore you together. Consider her your equal because you are twins. Si Gerong and Aura look at each other one last time and turn away, each heading to their homes. Si Gerong and its village then treat the dragons with kindness. The dragons would roam around the village, and the village people would feed and take care of the dragons if they ever became too old or weak. 
Because of this legend, the Komodo National Park was created to protect the lizards and their habitats because they are endangered. The local natives believed that it was their duty to appease the dragons, so they fed them goats and deer, but that since has been banned because the dragons were becoming even more aggressive. Visitors are equipped with forked sticks and protected by guards. They are also asked if they have any wounds or menstruating because the smell of blood drives the dragons crazy so they can provide extra guards. Indonesian life is still heavily influenced by folklore and mythology today. There are superstitions for almost everything and several people still believe in them, even spending a lot of money to abide by those superstitions, like making sure that their house is built facing north to ensure good luck. Most of Indonesia's traditional performances and dances, such as the Balinese Barong, are based on famous mythological stories and folklore, performed in small communities all the way to major government events. Even though these are just a few of the expansive amounts of mythological stories commonly told throughout Indonesia, hopefully these stories will enlighten more people about the rich mythology of Indonesia.